Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. Today's video is going to be about my survivalist med medicine cabinet. And this is probably going to be the worst or the most boringest video I have ever made on my channel before because my medicine cabinet looks just like yours. Now there may be some differences but for the most part we've got plain old, you know, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, witch hazel, uh, scrub, the, uh, um, these uh, multi-purpose contact lens solutions, I used to wear contacts. Very rare that I'll put contacts in today because it's just uh, too much trouble for the condition of my eyes. And uh, But the, the saline solution is good for anything. If you get dirt in your eye, you can just wash it away. Uh, if you wake up with dry eyes, you can just wash it away. And so this is good for anybody, whether you use contact lenses or not. Now, something else we keep a lot of is like cold and flu medicine. And a lot of that is because uh, when your throat is sore and your nose is running, you cannot sleep, you cannot function. Spend a lot of time in the woods. So another thing we keep is a lot of stuff, which is for the curing of poison ivy. I'm highly allergic, and so is my wife. So we keep these kind of items. The one in the middle is actually a prescription medication. We'll talk more about prescriptions in a little while. Uh, a couple of items that are also important is a thermometer. A pill splitter and one of these bulbs. If you get a problem with an earache or something, a lot of times it's uh, because of earwax buildup. You can just take plain old warm water or hydrogen peroxide and squeeze it into your ear. Problem solved. Now, something that's really cheap you might want to ask for specifically is this here first aid antiseptic. Uh, this will ruin your clothes. It smells like creosote and it's black. And in fact, I need to go down and buy me about six tubes of this just to have extras. Now, these things here, like uh, antihistamines and such, uh, this is a steroid for, uh, and it's a prescription thing. It's a steroid for uh, when your nose is stuffed up from allergies. Something else that's very important is Blistex. We actually use Cormex. And it's good for cold sores, chap lips, whatever, and also good for that is Vaseline. If you have Vaseline, you really don't need these things, but this, this to me, is a lot more effective. We do have dental floss, and we do have some, like, a uh, real cheap version of Vicks Vapor Rub. Uh, aspirins. Of everything I got in here, this is the one thing that could potentially just lose its effectiveness and crumble into mush. But really, and... Uh, I haven't really had that problem. I have eaten aspirins that were five or ten years old and within a couple of minutes no headache. So things don't go as bad as quick as the uh, networks want you to think, but they want you to be constantly replacing your medicine cabinet. You really don't have to. You see these vitamins. It, this is what happens when people ask you, tell you, oh, you know, if this happens to you, you need to take this kind of a vitamin, and you say, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And a week later, like, how's it going since you started taking them vitamins? And they just keep on you until you finally go buy the things and take them. I, I don't believe in any vitamins. I believe just eat a lot of different things and all that'll work out. This little soap dish, kind of a practical thing, we just keep it full of, of those uh, Q-tips. We, I actually don't like Q-tips. I always get the cheaper version, and they work better. All right, now, if we get over here. This is my actual closet in my bathroom. And uh, something that... The reason I'm even going to show you this is because people are like, cleanliness is next to godliness. You need to do a video telling people if they don't get clean, they'll get a disease. That's baloney. Uh, if you end up having to deal with a bunch of dead bodies, you're not any more likely to get a disease than anybody else, unless you're working on a very fresh dead body with some kind of pathogen. Most pathogens that go from one person to another will not go from a dead body to a live person because within a few minutes of death the pathogens are killed by the same processes which cause the body to rot away. Now there are some exceptions. You can get cholera, you can get dysentery, you can get um, what is the other one? E. coli. If you're, uh, you've got a lot of dead people in your drinking water supply. But down here you see I've got a pretty good stockpile of laundry detergent, bleaches, uh, mercuriatic acid, uh, window cleaners, uh, dish detergent, shampoos. And we stockpile that simply because we're stockpilers. 
Why not, why not have all that? It's not going to rot. It's not going to deteriorate. No reason to keep one bottle around when you can keep ten and they can stay there indefinitely. And these, uh, these items may go up to astronomical prices before the end of this world or the end of civilization. And, uh, you know, we're just like everybody else. We, we eat at Walmart, we drink at Walmart, we clean ourselves at Walmart, and when Walmart's gone, we're going to suffer just like all these people we accuse of being sheeple. You know, we want to keep our lifestyle going, you know. We're not worried about just living. We want to keep on glutting ourselves just like the rest of any good Americans. All right, in here we're going to show you a few other things that make our survivalist medicine cabinet a little bit different. You know, we don't stockpile things like splints and gauze and, you know, material for making plaster cast or anything. Just got the few basics. Uh, where we're a little bit different is like this neosporin and this triple antibiotic ointment here. We got five tubes, not to, not counting the one in the downstairs bathroom and the one in the upstairs bathroom. By the way, both medicine cabinets are stocked exactly the same, the upstairs and the downstairs. Got, what is that, four 500 packs of, of Q-tips. Uh, looks like seven bottles of rubbing alcohol, six or seven bottles of cough medicine, another uh, seven bottles of hydrogen peroxide. And these are self-explanatory. Uh, vitamins, looks like I got four bottles of vitamins, and, and then there's this mineral oil, which I've never even actually used mineral oil, but it's just such a useful thing to have for a laxative or for whatever that we keep it, and it's cheap. Now, Epsom salt also can be used as a laxative, but it's good for soaking sore feet in. And up front here, you see I've got three bottles of Vaseline. That's actually about 10 deep, so that's about 30. Who knows? It's a lot of them, a lot of Vaseline. Bandages, uh, we mostly inherited these from people that have died. You know, people get these horrible diseases and they die, and their spouse ends up with just buckets full of Band-Aids, and they give us a bunch. And once again, multi-purpose eye solution, multivitamins, toiletries, you know, toothbrush. Now, this here is something you might want to consider. In this bag is my prescription medications. When I get a prescription from a doctor, I don't just, you know, I, first off, I don't use prescriptions. If they say, oh, you're going to really get sore from this, so here's pain medicine. Well, I'll... I go get the pain medicine, and if it's for three refills, I actually will get all three refills and put them in that bag, even though I don't use them. Because there may be a time when I wish I had some pain medicine or some antidepressants or some what all those prescriptions are in there, and so I stockpile those. And to this day, if I want an Oxycontin or a lower tab or one of them kind of things, and I just can't take the pain anymore, I will reach in there and get one. But... I don't know, I may have started out five years ago, I may have had 150 uh, lower tabs in there, and I might be down to 140 now, because I really try not to take them, but there are just days when I can't, I can't not take them. And that's just a good technique. If you get a prescription for medication, just go ahead and get everything and try your best not to use it. When you don't have access to medical anymore, uh, this bag may be the best thing I got in the house. Now, you, you, like you see in here, I don't have all this kind of really complicated stuff that a lot of preppers have but if you look here and I've talked about this book on several videos where there is no doctor one of the best medical books ever written now <clears throat> you may want to go look at what other people say about this book because because doctors and nurses who review this say it's too simplistic and of course they're product placement specialists so when they see a book that doesn't talk about the latest gizmo gadget or medicine they just badmouth it. But honestly, 90% of everything that happens to you will be will need to be cleaned and oh boo boo. It'll need to be cleaned and uh, disinfected and then some kind of a uh, ointment put on it and bandaged. And if you break a bone, your your job at setting a bone will be almost as good as what a doctor can do. And if you need stitches, uh, I've had stitches maybe six different times, maybe three times I've given them to myself. And uh, it's not a big deal to just use cotton thread and a regular sewing needle. If the needle's not sharp enough for you, you can use a regular water stone that you sharpen your pocket knife with and sharpen the needle. Because that's really the only difference between a uh, surgical needle and a sewing needle. 
You will need a pair of needle nose pliers to push the needle through because it's very, very difficult to pierce skin and especially to pull that thing all the way through with that big old hunk of thread on it. Something I have learned is if you cut yourself really deep, you can't just sew the skin together. You're going to have to sew the muscle together first because I've had that happen to me and then sew the skin up over it. Now, I always thought that there was a special kind of suture that was for internal stitches that would dissolve. Basically, anything that you stitch yourself up with internally is going to dissolve, and especially something like cotton. Cotton is very, deteriorates very easily, so it's going to go away. And even if it doesn't, it's only there to hold your muscle together, and if it holds your muscle together, that's fine. Uh, up here, I've got, I said I've got some bandages, and I have some sterile gauze in there, but really, I've got every t-shirt I've ever owned. They're all stacked up and washed in my closet, and, it's, uh, you know, an old-used t-shirt is just as good as surgical gauze. So, I hope you're not too disappointed in how old sustenance and covering is expecting to take care of itself after the collapse, but basically, all of these little basic things... Don't hardly cost anything, and they'll do just about everything you need done medically. Don't want to survive. Don't listen to me.